how it works and what the benefits are you'd expect to see. There was meant to be a presentation here, but um, unfortunately I've been let down a little bit with the uh, equipment necessary, so I'm just going to have to speak to you. So I'm going to start with what executive coaching actually is. Well, the difference between business coaching and executive coaching is when I do business coaching, I'm looking at the business as a whole, as well as the person and how they're working. With executive coaching, what I'm doing is working with the individual and their impact on the business. So it could be their personal impact amongst their team, it could be the impact that they're having with their clients, but also I'll be looking at them as a whole as well and seeing what they're doing outside of work and how that's impacting on their work too. So it's kind of like a form of training. It's usually be paid for out of the HR budget of that company. Um, and it helps them to improve their soft skills, but it's also an investment in the individuals. So the individuals who receive the coaching really feel sort of supported by, their, by the company. So what counts as an executive? Who would I work with? Well, it's pretty much everyone. Everyone would benefit from it. So the organisation would have to pick who would be the most, um, who would be the one that would benefit most. So they might choose their directors. They might choose um, new managers, for instance, those who are going up the career ladder. In some cases, they might choose those whose um, performance needs managing. So if they're not doing particularly well and they're a bit worried, they might have to start going through procedures to remove that person rather than do that. They bring somebody and do some executive coaching and sort the problems out. How does it work? Usually it's one-to-one. -one, so I'm, that's, that's my preferred way of doing things. So I really feel that when you're working with somebody one-to-one, -one, you can find out about their behaviour and how they can improve it. Um, and they can t talk to you about things privately in confidence that they wouldn't be able to do in a group setting. I do work in group settings as well, so it can be like delivering training on a particular subject and also I can facilitate team meetings, so if there's something that a company wants to get more into the culture of their organisation then they might ask me to run that meeting and to get everyone's engagement into it. Well that's all very lovely, but what are the actual results? That's the interesting bit, isn't it? If, somebody's gonna, if you're going to try and get me a referral, you're going to need to be able to tell the company what they can expect to receive. Well, had the projector been here, I would have just shown you a list and let you read it for yourselves, but unfortunately it's not, so I'm going to just quickly read the list and I'm going to pick a couple um, to, to point out in more detail. So increased confidence, that's a big one, that's, that's quite a key one actually, because it does make a big difference to when people feel more confident, they're just able to do a lot more. Improved communication skills, better time management, um, reducing mistakes, improved emotional well-being, I'm going to come back to that one in a second, and improved health. Overcoming conflicts. So I want to um, stop on that one for a second. I've actually worked with directly preventing a bullying um, complaint from happening within an organisation. Now, I wasn't brought in to do that. Nobody knew that this particular person I was working with felt that she was being bullied. But in my so one to one confidentially with her, because I'm not going to tell you who it was or any of the detail, um, but she, she confided in me that she really felt like one particular person was bullying her. Um, and we were talking about what her options were. But before we looked into what her options were with you know, kind of going down HR routes, what we looked at first was changing the perspective. Now, if I was to give everyone around this table a piece of paper and ask you all to draw a map of Southend, you'd all draw something which vaguely looked like Southend, apart from John, because they just moved down here. Um, you'd, all, you'd all draw something that looked a bit like Southend. But if you were to compare your drawing to somebody else's drawing, they'd be very different. But, so even though the territory is the same, your perception of it would come out differently. So that applies in many different situations. So if there's something that you're not feeling particularly happy about, what you can do is actually look at how you can see that differently. So how might somebody else look at the same situation and what might be happening for the other person? So in this case, I helped her to see the, per the perspective from the person that might be doing the bullying and what, um, what they might be thinking and, and also helped her to see it from her colleague's point of view were they experiencing the same thing? Was it just her that felt like this, or did other people feel like it as well? And what we actually ended up doing in that case was she changed not only the way that she was looking at the situation, but she changed the way that she was interacting with that person. And then after that, just, just for one session talking about it, the next time I saw her, she felt completely differently about it. She had a much improved relationship with that person. She didn't feel like she was being bullied anymore. So that prevented a, a costly and um, difficult situation occurring for that company. Some of the other results you might expect to see better work-life balance for people. So a lot of um, employees nowadays, people are taking people out of businesses because of the recession, there's not as much um, budget available. So people who are left behind end up doing a lot more work than they were doing before, and they were already doing quite a lot of work. That's why they were, they were the ones that were being kept, mm -hmm. kept on. So then they can start to suffer from stress, um, feel that they've got too much to do, things don't get done, um, and then their emotional, emotional health as well as their work on balance deteriorate. So I'd work with them to help them to manage what they're doing better, to pull on other resources, 
but also to make sure that they are making time to look after themselves as well, so that, that they will still be able to form, um, function in their job properly and the overall company benefits as well. And um, also I've got here increased job satisfaction, um, reducing stress levels, and the last one I want to mention is removing self-limiting beliefs. And I want you to all have a little think about this yourself. Is there anything that you say to yourself that you cannot do? Okay, so I was with somebody yesterday and uh, he said about three or four self-limiting beliefs in about five minutes. So, oh, I'm not somebody who can do that kind of thing. I'm not really a leadership type of person. If there are any of those things that you say to yourself, ask yourself, if you were to look at it from a different perspective, what are the reasons you could think of why you actually are able to do that? Okay, because we, what we do is we just repeat our same um, ways of thinking and then they then affect the, the actions that we take. So if you decide, right, actually no, I'm not going to be the person who's not a leadership type person. I am going to be a leadership type person. What does a leadership type person do? This is a technical term, by the way. Um, what, does that, what, what does that person do? Can I actually do that? And be determined that you can do it and then see what you would do differently if you believe that you can do it. It's the action, not the belief, that makes a difference. So if you can do the action of somebody who believed what you need to believe, you'll suddenly find that you can do it. So if you take one thing away from today, have a think about that and have a look at it. Okay, so those are the sorts of things that the individuals would experience. But what does that actually mean? Well, for an employer, it means increased productivity. That, is, that has been studied, and um, there's a study by McGovern et al. Um, and they said that the increase, increased productivity can be... Um, calculated at, at 5.7 times the cost of the coaching itself. So it's, it's more difficult to measure in an executive coaching setting than it is in a business coaching setting, but that's generally the findings from, from that. You also That's before you've um, accounted for fewer sick days, so people because they're less stressed, they're not having to go off on long-term sick, and also better staff retention. People aren't leaving because they're dissatisfied, but also they're not getting fired because um, they're doing better at their job as well. For the individual, it means promotions, it means um, that they feel more, um, they, they feel better recognised, they've got better working conditions, and they just generally feel happier. So, um, everything that I've talked about so far has been from the perspective of the employer paying for the coaching. Um, and so, some of you might be kind of maybe a little bit dubious, so I'd like to remove some reservations as well, just in case there are any. I have also had a number of um, executives come to me and pay for coaching out of their own pockets. And they wouldn't be people that that you wouldn't necessarily expect to feel that they needed it. So um, one person that really springs to mind was doing extremely well in a very well-known um, insurance company up in the city, and he was being promoted, 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 because to the outside it looked like he was doing really well. On the inside, he was panicking, and he was feeling really stressed and really feeling like he couldn't do it. So he came to me, um, sorted his mindset out, sorted his organisation out, and, and then was much happier as a result. And I do have that happen quite a lot. I also have people who have coaching put on by their organisation then um, refer me to their friends and family who decide to then pay for it out of their own pockets. Um, and going back to C2C, as I mentioned in my 60 seconds, what they have now done is they've actually written coaching into their standards. So it's now in their operations um, policy that before they can um, do any kind of disciplinary measure or before they can promote anyone, they have to consider coaching for that individual. So before they put extra workload on them or go, no, you're no good, they have to give them a chance to... Um, to look at how they can improve and how they manage themselves better. So hopefully those things will, will reassure you that coaching is, is a, a good asset to an organisation. But, do you have any questions? Kevin? What sort of organisations actually look for? Okay, so organisations that have got a large number of, um, well not necessarily a large number, but fee earners, so the ones that are actually doing this, their job to bring in the money, um, and organisations that have um, a structure where there's quite a few management positions as well. That's in, in the main what I'm looking for, but also anyone who's in an executive position but feels that they could be doing better or they would like to excel as an individual, I'd like to introduce those sorts of people as well. Yeah. Um, as you know, I've been working with you for some time. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that Vicky mentioned was belief systems. Um, uh, People enflust their beliefs upon you. Um, so, as a parent, what advice would you give us to uh, to, to, to give our offspring better? That's beliefs? a really good question. If um, I would listen to what they are saying, because pe people's belief systems do often come out come out when they're talking. 
Um, so if they say, you know, I can't do that, that's a, straight away that should be a, 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 like an alarm going off and, and challenge them on it. Not aggressively, of course, no. but just say to them, okay, so you think you can't do that? What's, you know, ask them why it is they think they can't do it. Because they've probably got some evidence as to why they think they can't do it. So it might be somebody's told them or somebody else is better. Um, and then ask them to think about the reasons why they might be able to do it. Or if you could do it, how would you do that? So encourage them to think about it in a solution focused way rather than they just don't, don't definitely can't do it. Yeah, Nikki? Um, I've had companies that are training a member of staff to do their certification. What's the difference between having an in house certification and hiring someone yeah. yourself? Good question. Um, some companies are doing that, and I think it's better to do that than to do nothing at all. But the problem with having somebody in house, well, there's a couple of problems. One is that that person. Um, well, not that they wouldn't do, treat it confidentially, but the, the person that is having the coaching from them may not feel that they can speak to them as openly because they are within the organisation. And it also depends on what the, what the normal working relationship is between those two people because sometimes they train the manager to do the coaching for the person, but they might have a problem with the manager that they might want to speak about. So that's one reason why it's better to go outside. Um, the other reason is that I, I actually have a, a friend who's got one of their colleagues has been trained to do the coaching, but the colleague that they actually trained up to do the coaching had already been signed off for six months sick and um, with stress. <laughs> so obviously they had enough of a workload themselves and were struggling after that. So, so then also give them the additional responsibility of coming in and doing the coaching. I just think it must be quite difficult for that person to, to totally switch off and just focus on them for, for that hour of that, that meeting. So whilst it's better than none, I do think it is. it makes more sense to bring somebody in outside. Maybe have one question. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, Vicky, um, just slightly different away from executive coaching, I think we sort of touched on this before in our, uh, when we had a one-to-one. -one. Um, teenagers, you know, we've got a situation where some just come out of universities, find jobs, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. um, probably lacks a little bit of confidence. Um, can you sort of help in that sense? Can you help with CVs? Can you help with interview process and that yes. sort of stuff? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, usually with a kind of CV inter interview process, um, people don't really necessarily know what, what it is that they're looking for, what it is that they're up against. Um, and that, so, that, so that's why they feel they're for confidence. So I can help them to look at it from every angle, every eventuality that might come up, so they're prepared for everything, um, and, and also kind of helping them to get the best, making sure that they're, they're being as effective as possible in their CV. I also have lots of different exercises that I can do with people to help them to, to boost their confidence too. So, yeah. How far we travel? Uh, yes, yeah, I do. I, um, I will go up to London to work with people like that as well. Right, that's probably about all the time for this one. Yeah, it's testimonial. Um, with this Cape Harbour, it's, it's so much in my head, and I'm sat here, and it's so much I've got to do, and so much I want to do. One thing I found with Vicky, it allowed me to sit down and write and structure it. And she taught me to start to delegate, and I'm the worst person not to delegate. And it's really freeing up quite a lot mentally to go from there to grow. So that side of it, from a small business as well, going back to before. Yeah. 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 Yeah